Hey guys. Up until now, we have been working. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't say hello, guys. I say hey, guys. Hello, guys. So uh, uh, until now, we have been only working uh, with one degree of indeterminacy, and we have used a method of the consistent deformation for that. Uh, when you have more than one degree of indeterminacy, the work becomes a lot. So you have to do a lot of work. But I want to just show you at least the concept of how to do that if you need to use this method. For example, let's say that you have something like this. Something like that. And then you have a distributed law on top of that. The first thing here uh, is checking what is the degree of indeterminacy of this is two, three, four, five, six, six, and then you have one member. So you have three degrees of indeterminacy. Three, de three, three is in the a structural indeterminate of third degree. So how do we do that? Well, uh, these distances can be the same, can be different. It doesn't matter, but you, you have different distances, let's say right here. Now if you have three degrees of indeterminacy, that means that we have to eliminate three redundants. The what redundants the redundants that you eliminate uh, eliminate as many redundants as degrees of indeterminacy. In this case, remember, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, r equals 6, n equals 1, r is greater than 3 times n, third degree. That's what we did, third degree of indeterminacy. So we have to eliminate three redundants. I'm going to eliminate these three redundants here, b, c, d, let me name this a, b, c, d, e. And of course, you're going to have here some reactions. Ax is going to be zero because there's not any force, not any force in x. So this is going to be Ay, By, Cy, Dy, and Ey. So I'm going to create a primary structure by eliminating the eliminating this is not shear moment diagram, okay? I'm just going to show you what you have to do. I'm going to eliminate by, cy, and dy as redundants. And I'm going to keep here my distributed load. Whatever value is that distributed load, omega. But I'm going to create only these ones. A, E. If that is the case, I know that this beam, which is my primary structure, is going to deflect something like that. Now, this is the primary structure. Now, at this point, at this point, and at this point, the displacement, the deflection, is supposed to be zero. However, it's not zero. And it's not zero because I am eliminating them. So I'm going, effectively, I'm going to have a deflection here. Let's say that deflection is called deflection at the point B in the original one or the primary one, deflection at the point C in the original or primary one, and deflection in the point D in the primary one. And now what do I have to do? I have to push this up, push this up, and push this up. That's what we have to do. Then we have to create our virtual structures. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to push this up in this way with, you know, the unit load. We always do that. And when I put the unit load over there, something like this is going to happen. This is going to deflect like that. And then it's going to come like that. But look, we're going to have certain values here, certain deflections or certain uh, coefficients of flexibility. 
and because this is the name that we are gonna call them. So I'm gonna have here FBB, FCB, and FTB. And this is important the way you name them because it's gonna tell you that the flexibility coefficient BB is just the deformation or the deflection caused at B at the point B when the unit force is applied at B. This is the deflection caused at the point C where the unit load is applied at the point B and this is the deflection at the point D where the unit load is applied at the point B. Now, then we have to also push this at this point, at the point B, because remember, we have the formation here, but it has to be zero. It doesn't have to be that. And when we do that, we're gonna have something like this. And then we're gonna have also these other deflections or flexibility coefficients here. So I start with this one. This is the, the flexibility at point C when the load is applied at the point C. So this is gonna be the, the flexibility at the point B when the load is applied at C. And this is gonna be the flexibility at the point D when the load is applied at C. And then what else do we have to do? Well, then we have to get the other virtual, which is this one. And then I'm going to push it at the point D, push it up. And if I do that, then you're gonna have some deformation that is gonna look like this, once again. And this is gonna be the, the, the flexibility coefficient at D when the virtual load is applied at D, flexibility coefficient at C when the load is applied at D, and flexibility coefficient at B when the load is applied at D. Now, this is my primary structure, these are virtual and our process is a little bit longer but it's uh, well not a little bit longer it's a lot longer but it's basically uh, similar at the bottom line this deflection is zero here at that point so what is our objective this deformation plus this value and this value is cause by one, right? But I don't have one. I have to have my reaction BY here. But at the same time, when I apply this at C, I'm gonna produce this deformation here also. But if I apply one at C, I'm gonna get this, but I'm not applying one, I'm applying CY. So it's gonna be FBC times CY plus FBD, which is cause when I apply this one, but FBD times dy, FBD, dy, and this has to be zero because this is zero. And then we have one equation here. And then we keep going and we say now, okay, but zero also now for the point C is the deformation here. That means that if I add this deformation, HCO plus now keep going here. What do I have here? FCB multiply by BY plus FCC multiply by CY plus FCD multiply by DY. And I have a third equation because here it has to be zero also, so that's zero. It's gonna be the equivalent of this, FD, the displacement in the primary, plus FDB, BY, plus FDC, CY, plus FDD, DY. And what we have here is a system of three by three. Three equations and three unknowns. If that, does that take time? Yes, that takes time. We have to calculate the deflections. If, if we do this using virtual work, for example, it's gonna be a lot of work. But if we use the formulas from the books that they're 
pre-tabulated for, for different deflections, then it's going to be faster. Now, if this is symmetric, it's going to be even faster because it happens that this one and this one will be the same. I mean, this one and this one will be the same. And this one and this one will be the same. And this one and that one will be the same also. So, this is the introduction to the using the force method by with different degrees, several degrees of indeterminacy. Um, I'm going to solve right away, right now. I'm going to solve an example using this concept. See you guys. Keep watching, please.